Welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name's Ed Piscor. I'm Jim Rugg. And we're going to be talking about a pretty interesting document, man, The Uncensored Mouse. But first, Jimmy, what do you have? I have another book I found that's still in print, The Plain Janes, available wherever you buy books online or in person. Comic book stores can order these. Bookstores can order them for you. And uh, I want to recommend it to everybody watching who's looking for gifts in this upcoming uh, uh, Christmas season for nieces, daughters, stepdaughters, things like that. It's a young adult graphic novel about a bunch of high school artists that start making public art and uh, stirs up all kind of trouble in their neighborhood. And like I said, still available you can also join me on patreon.com slash jimrug, where you can download my out-of-print zines and mini-comics. You can see a lot of my original art and scripts and process and see how I make the comics I make at patreon.com slash jimrug. It's a chunky volume right there, Jimmy. It's my shoujo manga. Dig it. Another uh, young adult graphic novel, because I certainly would have read this as a teen. Uh, Red Room, Murder on the Dark Web for Fun and Profit is the name of the game in Red Room Comics. Four issues of the Anti-Social Network are out there right now, and every issue is completely its own story, self-contained. So if you see an issue, scoop it up, give it a read. If you like it, go grab another. Uh, these are in shops right now. They're going quick, man. So if you That's a good one. Yeah, if you see one, scoop it up, get your hands on it. We also are preparing a trade paperback that's going to be coming out uh, in uh, like March 9th, I believe, is when it's going to gonna hit hit comic shops and there's like 50 or 60 extra pages worth of stuff uh, artwork commentary char character designs all sorts of stuff you go to my link tree in the description below this video you're going to be able to order the comics pre-order the trade or go to my patreon uh to read the comics before they hit paper three bucks for the archive there over 150 pages worth of comics on uh the patreon uh but the order of the day jimmy is a comic called The Uncensored Mouse, uh, put out by those guys at Malibu, man, who are looking to, to make a couple of dollars, when uh, it might have been might have been Bill Blackbeard, one of the famous uh, comic strip collectors of yore, uh, sort of noticed that these, 1930, these 1930 uh, comic strips of Mickey Mouse that were out there uh, probably have just lapsed into public domain. So these uh, entrepreneurial sorts, Dave Ulbricht, was like, well, fuck it, man. Let's make hay while the sun is shining. You know, let's not go too crazy to try to get the ire of Disney uh, on, on our heads, man. Put out this comic, we'll call it The Uncensored Mouse. No mention of Mickey Mouse on the front or back. Well, how about that? They were shipped in poly bags, so nobody could really, you know, go through them at the comic shop. No mention of Mickey Mouse on the front here. Uh, a, cl a classic collection of uncensored Floyd Gottfriedson comic strips from the 1930s. The good mouse artist. <laughs> uh, the uncensored stuff, very appropriate for uh, modern times, because this young uh, Mickey Mouse, there's a lot of uh, suicidal gunplay, uh, shit like that. Uh, there's there's some heavy ra racist imagery that uh, was very commonplace in comics in the context of 1930s America. These comics ring like uh, small small town America circa 1930s with all the foibles involved. So, Ed, how did you learn about this document? I saw this thing floating around at uh, in dollar bins, you know, and this, the word uncensored. That does it. <laughs> extremely evocative. <laughs> yes. Extremely evocative. You're going to buy something. The Uncensored Mouse, great history of uncensored mice in comics. I think of Squeak. I think of Quimby. Uh, pure black. You got to look inside, man. I, and I do think I had my copies since... I was, you know, 10, 12 years old. These are recent pickups for me, and they did come out of, like, a dollar bin. But it was after... I, I think you brought this to my attention, or one of the videos we made for Kayfabe, you know, it was mentioned somewhere, and, you know, it's an oddity. It's it's the kind of thing that, that I, I want to see. Yeah. And especially because it's not like this is ever going to be reprinted. You know, as a comic book, when these are gone, they're gone. They prepped uh, a third issue, but there were injunctions and cease and desists and legal actions taken by Disney, which uh, actually they, they renewed these old copyrights in like the 50s, which put that 
um, that date of public domain, push it off to 2005, which I bet you they did some more stuff in 2004 to make sure that they still have uh, lock, stock, and barrel full copyright. It's amazing to think, like, uh, you know, comics now from the 30s, 90 years old. It's it's incredibly nuts, man. Like, when we talk EC comics and they're 70 years old, like, that's... That's too much, man. Now, these are the earliest strips, and they were really planning on just doing a kind of, like what Fantagraphics is doing, just doing a kind of uh, linear reprint of the strips from the very, very beginning. In issue one, you know, it's the it's the earliest strips that were done to try to entice syndicates. It's neat to consider, too, like whenever we're looking at this, this is one strip. This is one strip. These are daily strips that are being reprinted. But in the 30s, the daily strips were much bigger than what we grew up reading in newspapers, uh, you know, where it was like little postage stamps, four of them. Uh, so you're seeing about like one and a half strips per page. The fun stuff about these strips, like I do think that Godfrey worked for the animation department and, and sort of, you know, Ub Iwerks and Walt Disney, they were a little too busy with those big film projects, man. So they got one of their reliable you know, animated in-betweeners or somebody, man, to, like, do this comic. And just the beat-for-beat beat animation of these comics is spectacular cartooning. Yeah, and it's coming out of that time period where animation was, like, you had guys animating background figure. You know, like, everything, if you watch that animation, is bouncing around. Yeah. And and you get some of that kind of movement in this era for uh, for a comic strip like this. I do think that there was a lot of, like, a, like a circle of influence where... Some of these early strips are sort of inspired by some of the animated stuff. But once Floyd Godfredson starts cooking, now you're going to start seeing animated shorts that uh, that are taken from, from the strips. Uh, this Mickey Mouse face, you know, call me crazy, right? I never noticed that, like, th- that this would... This whole top piece is eyeballs. I always thought that the eyeballs were just the polka dots. And I always thought that all of that was just complete face and hairline. It's because he evolves, right? Like, yeah. like if you see him, once you start to see him in color, then it's like they do need to add the outline around the white part of the eye. But uh, yeah, it's, it is it is, it is, is an oddity looking at these. And of course, like any of these characters, they they all look that way. If you you know look at early Garfield and then look at Garfield 20 years in. Now, now I do like polka dot eyes. Uh Mickey Mouse best. In fact, like, I, you know, I have all the, well, I have all the Fantagraphics books until Floyd Godfordson started drawing the eyeballs, and I'm like, ah, that looks too corporate. <laughs> <laughs> like, with this one, you know, you can't get enough. Can't get enough. He's, the the character's a real boob. It, it's it's one of those funny things where this is your, this is your tentpole character, and he's, like, uh, a, kind of a doofus early on, you know? Like, I guess that was very attractive to the people of the 1930s. But they become way more protective of the character as he becomes more and more of an icon. I wonder if part of that is uh, coming out of, like, silent film era. Right, Charlie know, Chaplin. Like big, big act, right. Yeah, slapstick and, and big kind of uh, acting and projecting and stuff. Yeah, this kind of gimmicks. Yeah, right. You need to be able to just read it you know, with, with the little bit of action. Very interesting that with certain precedents that have been set with things like the air pirates funnies and stuff that Ulbricht would even deign to, to, to do this at all. You, you have to imagine that Disney would be a litigious sort and something was going to happen, especially in the late eighties. Yeah. You know, like I feel like they've backed off in some ways. You see artists that are, you know, drawing their characters without license at these conventions and stuff and doesn't seem like anybody cares. Man, in the 80s, Disney was a scary thing to cross. I do wonder if there's some element of, like, you know, much later the term Streisand effect was coined, man. But the phenomenon was always there, where if, uh, you know, you do this, and you get their ire, and if they do proceed with some sort of lawsuit, now your company's getting a lot of extra attention. You could cease and desist and, like, you know, pay, pay them off whatever they want, but could the advertising of just letting... Uh, the world know that your comic company exists. It, could that be a business move? That would be that would be wild if this was like some stunt designed to you know be sued and and, and uh, somehow uh, get generate publicity from that. <laughs> That's pretty fun drawing. Now that we're in it, like an interior shot, look at all of the textures you're getting on the bed, the bedspread, and even like the wall and the light. Yeah, for sure, man. This is fun, you know, a little formal experimentation. The, the, the match burnt out. Silhouettes. 
Like, it does not take Godfredson long to be, like, having fun in this comic strip format, figuring stuff out. Yeah, for sure. Super strong stuff. You could see almost all of this material is reprinted. In, I think the first volume of uh, the Fantagraphics uh, hardcover series. Um, and a little bit of uh, context in info, you know, a little bit of historical information of what you're seeing and stuff. So kind of a nice package for the late 80s. If you pick this up at your... Uh, it's so weird to think of this as like a direct market comic book and stuff, but you get a little bit of that comics history, which used to be impossible to come by. Absolutely. I do think that the uh, the first one might be by Bill Blackbeard. Let's just take a quick, quick peek. Oh, those yeah. little extras are neat. Yeah, the first one's Bill Blackbeard. You could see how some of this stuff like informs Chris Ware. Yeah, absolutely. You know, this kind of extra stuff, man, that you, we would see in the Quimby Mouse strips in the Daily Texan and other places like that. Yeah, and and not uh, not original to Mickey Mouse. Like, this is what comic strips were doing in newspapers. They were so visual. Um, I have a book, and it's on, like, some library was throwing out, like, their archive of newspapers, and they made this book, and it's all, there's so much art in those late 1800s, early 1900s newspapers yes essentially the whole thing is art you know compared to photos that would would come to populate that so you get to see a lot of those kind of things a couple of very cool documents with some very interesting history poking the disney bear which isn't done quite enough man and uh, by a great cartoonist you know like sometimes you get this historical stuff and it's historically significant but to have a good cartoonist uh doing it too pretty pretty strong yeah yeah very very strong comics as a, as a reading experience and probably Beyond the Smithsonian book of comic strip comics, probably some of the first real Floyd Godfredson reprints that were done in, in our, our modern time. And maybe some of that stuff showed up in Walt Disney's comics and stories back in the day. I can't speak to that. I don't know that. Yeah, especially getting a little bit of uh, coverage of the artist, too. Yeah, you know, for Highlighting sure. him and, and, and his strength as a cartoonist. And putting out, you know, some deep, dark secrets that Disney would be very happy to not have you see. You know what? That could also be a, be a business move of, like, we're going to reprint this stuff that if they bring a lawsuit, it's going to shine a light on this exact material. And this this sh some of that stuff is censorious man like uh you can you, they probably would not want that to be uh celebrated yeah exactly man uncensored yep. you really want to shine a spotlight on this <laughs> fun to look at man pick them up if you see them i just saw issue two at, at, in the dollar bin down at ides man and i see it go for twenty dollars on ebay man so you know they're out there they were in good volume and uh, and you could find them. And... <laughs> of course they were. <laughs> now I'll be thinking they're sitting on something, printed a bunch of them. <laughs> <laughs> K favors like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit the bell, we'll notify you when new vids are available. Jimmy, what's out there? Join me on patreon.com slash jimrug where you can download out of print zines and mini comics. You can see a lot of my original art, scripts, process, how I make comics like Street Angel, Deadly Girl Alive, and The Plain Janes, and more at patreon.com slash jimrug. Red Room Comics in the Wild, Murder on the Dark Web for Fun and Profit. Uh, four issues of the Antisocial Network are out on the stands as we speak. Each issue completely self-contained. We have a trade paperback that's going to have about 50 to 60 pages more additional material uh, coming out November 9th. Uh, you can hit up my Patreon, patreon.com slash headpiscord to read these comics before they hit paper. Well over 150 pages up there for, th for three bucks. New strips every Tuesday. All these links are in my link tree in the description below this video. What else, Jimmy? Subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe e-newsletter at the links below this video. You can also find Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts and merchandise at the links below this video. Give one less set of marchers, man, so we could be on our way. Read more comics.